Hey, welcome back. We are making pretty good progress with our floor frame, uh, but work's not done yet. Quick recap, we have got the sill plate in, the girders installed, we laid out for all of our joist patterns, where the joist will sit along the floor. We installed the header joist, we installed the rim joist, and we installed all the floor joists down the floor. Okay, so there's two more steps before this floor is complete. Uh, we're going to talk about the next one, which is blocking. Now, some people would say, oh, just go ahead and throw the sheeting on here. And we could cover this uh, with sheeting. And you know what? You could walk on it. But it wouldn't be as strong as it can be. And that's something that we definitely want. You want these buildings to last a lifetime. Um, so the whole purpose of blocking is to... Uh, take this joist right here and help uh, transfer excess load from this joist to the joist on both sides of it, all the way down there. Uh, so that's the purpose of blocking is, again, or in some cases cross-bridging. Uh, it'll take any excess weight placed on this one. It will transfer that weight to the two sides, the two joists right beside it. And it also stabilizes the joist keeps it from twisting and wobbling. So uh, imagine this. If uh, you're building a house 30 feet wide this way, 50 feet long that way, and uh, you got the subfloor on, but you don't have any blocking, and then it comes time for the drywallers to bring in all the drywall. What they do is they bring in a truckload of this stuff and just stash it throughout the house. They'll put 20 or 30 sheets in the living room, dining room, kitchen, if it's all open. They'll put 15 sheets in the bedroom and uh, whatever it's going to take to get the job done. And they just stack it up on the floor. Well, that's a lot of weight. And, or uh, let's say you're, you're going with tile floors or hardwood floors. Um, they'll just, again, the workers will place them out throughout the house. Uh, with as much as many boxes of tile or flooring that need to be in each room. Uh, and they'll just usually just stick it in one corner, um, in one spot on the floor. So let's say all that weight was resting on a couple of these joists and they didn't have blocking in between. Those joists actually could tilt under the weight if it's too much weight. So they could tilt. And if they tilt running sideways like this, the whole that that floor joist could fail um, and obviously that's not a good situation so what we do is we add something called blocking which would be the same material as your uh, as your two by four joist so if I'm using two by six I would use two by six blocking if I was using two by eights I would use two by eight blocking you wouldn't take a two by eight and use two by six blocking because it's not proper uh, support so two by six blocking and it gets inserted here. Next piece goes here. And now when I put weight on this joist, if this bends down any, it's it's gonna transfer this weight through the blocking to the next joist right beside it. So that's the purpose of blocking. The other thing that you come into is cross bridging, which is taking one by fours and literally it forms an X. Now these fours are way too long, but they would fit one here, one there, and they'd be cut to fit flush with the tops and bottoms of these joists, nailed into position. That does the same thing because yeah, it transfers weight from here down to the bottom of that one um, and they zigzag up like that throughout the house. So those are your two options. Um, some companies, they choose cross bridging, and cross bridging can be wood or it can be metal straps uh, that you attach. And they're pre-made, they're pre -made, and there's some nail holes that you nail on top of this side, you nail on the bottom of that side, and you're good to go. You form an X on both sides. Um, so those are some options that you have. A lot of times when we, when we did our work, we went with blocking, just standard solid block. So, 
I didn't tell you at the beginning of the video, kind of got ahead of myself, but there are questions I want you guys to answer. So here is your first question. What is the purpose of blocking or bridging? What is the purpose of blocking or bridging? So grab a, right, grab a piece of paper, pencil, write down your answers, and move on to the next. Uh, or play the video again and you'll keep going. So we've talked about the purpose of bridging and blocking. Um, now there's a couple of other uh, things that you have to know to make sure that you have the right amount of blocking on site. Um, number one, most building codes will say that you can have these um, spaced no more than eight feet apart going across your floor. So let's say that this was a 20 foot wide building. I couldn't just put one row of blocking down the middle because what's 20 divided by two? 10. And that's beyond eight feet. So I would actually have to have two runs of blocking in here. So I measure over and you can do this a couple of different ways. Usually if it's not an even eight foot measurement, um, you take that space and you divide it by how, however many there is. So if uh, 16, no, 20 divided by eight is like 2.5, right? Um, so then you figure out, okay, how many, uh, like what's the, you're gonna have three spaces in here. So it's gonna be roughly, um, roughly six feet in between each one. So you do a little bit of math and you figure out you can even space them. Or you could just measure over eight feet, put one block eight feet from there, put your second run of blocking in. It would be like over here. And then you have about a two foot space. You're still meeting code because it's still, you know, more than eight feet away. Um, but you've got to take that into account. And this blocking will run the entire length of the building. Okay. So every time you need, every time you need one line of blocking, you need to figure out enough linear footage of lumber so that you can go from one rim joist all the way to the other rim joist. And if you need six rows of blocking, you need to multiply by six. If you need three rows of blocking, multiply by three. So we'll talk more about how to, uh, how to figure out how much uh, and estimate materials later in this unit. Um, but question number two for you is what's the maximum spacing you can go in between rows of blocking or cross bridging? How far apart? What's the maximum spacing between blocking and bridging? Okay, that was question number two. All right, so now we're gonna get into how to do this. All right. Our structure is only four feet wide, but we're going to assume and we're just going to pretend that this is a 16 foot wide structure. All right. And so it's beyond eight feet. So I've got to, um, I have to set in some blocking. Now, if it's 16 feet wide, I measure this. All right. 16 feet and divide by two. Um, or excuse me, I divide that by eight and I'm going to get two parts. So I know that, hey, right in the middle, I'm going to put a line of blocking and it's going to go right down the middle here. So, um, and this, this obviously is going to change depending on the width of your structure. Again, if you have 16 feet, if it's 30 feet, if it's 28 feet, if it is 44 feet, it's all going to be different where you put these marks. But um, once you know where you want your marks to be, you simply come on your rim joist. I'm hooking from the outside of my building, outside of my header joist. I'm going to put a mark right where I want it to be. Now I'm going to move down to the other rim joist. And I'm going to make that same mark to the same side of the building. Next step is I'm going to take a chalk line. The chalk line will allow me to hook my line on one rim joist 
stretch it out all the way across, pull it, snap it, and it's gonna give me a nice straight line across each one of my joists. Imagine if you had 50 feet of joists that you had to measure over and mark however many times you have. Chalk lines can save you a ton of time. So, get on your first mark. Now again, with chalk lines, you want to stretch them tight, not guitar, not guitar string tight, but tight enough to where you know it's going to pop one crisp line. So stretch it tight, pull it up, step down one time, and you've got your marks here. Now you come in with the framing square, and on all of your marks, you know, square down the board because you want to make sure that your blocking doesn't go in crooked. If it goes in crooked, it's not, it's not going to look right. It's not going to act right. So get yourself lined up. You're going to mark on one side of the joist. You're going to mark on the other side of the joist as well. Okay. Even on rim joists, you're going to come back and catch your rim joists. Right? This happens on every joist all the way down the structure. Now I have one line going all the way down my structure on both sides because those are joists. Again, that was pretty quick because it was an eight foot section, but yeah, 50 feet of this would take a few minutes to work your way all the way down. But it's there. Now we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about options for installing this. Um, the first few times I did blocking, I wasn't instructed quite right and what I was told is to just put them I might have to go get my hammer again. All right put them in a straight line going down and here so what would happen is I would end nail here and nail there and then I would put another one in here. And I guess I am going to have to use my hammer. Okay. And I'd be able to end nail on this side. But the problem is, is now I'm going to have to come in on the toenail here. And when you toenail through, when you kind of, or I guess it's not really a toenail, it's, a, uh, it's an end nail at an angle. Not as much of the nail hits your piece of blocking as it should. Um, and you'd have to con continue this process. Now, it would provide a nice straight line down uh, the, the flooring here, but it just it makes installation a little bit trickier. So what a lot of the pros do and the people who have the experience and the know-how Instead of running them in a straight line on one side of your guide, one side of your chalk line, what they're actually going to do, come here, is they're going to alternate. So in one bay between two joists, it's going to sit on the right side of the line. In the next bay between the next two joists, it's going to sit on the left side. And then the next bay, it's going to sit on the right side. And it's going to alternate like that down the line. So what this is going to do, now I'll be able to cleanly drive my screws or nails straight in 
for this end nail. I have nothing going on at an angle. Makes it nice and easy. Makes it uh, makes it look right. And the support's there. You're not going to lose a lot of support if you're just on the opposite side of the line. Um, in fact, you won't lose any support because it'll still be enough of a enough support there with the joist. Now, if your blocking is three, four, five, maybe six inches apart, then there could be some lost strength. But in this case here, we're good. So what we want to do is get, let's say, like I say, get the chalk line down, square your lines on both sides of the board, alternate your, uh, your blocks. Now, I already have these cut, but when you do this, just simply measure, and as I mentioned in previous videos, measure along the top and uh, the top of one joist, the top of the next joist, like this here is just under 14 inches. So 13, 15, 16, since I was able to cut all these, so I'm on pieces that are pre-cut. Um, and also, if you have all varying lengths, you can write those lengths on the board. That way you know exactly where they go. Write them on the side of the joist, plus if he's blocking, it's easy to match back up. Uh, instead of trying to fit and figure, where does this piece go? Where does that piece go? Anyway, also, if this is where my blocking is going, guys, this is where you measure, right? Don't measure down here because this joist could bow and it could be, you can get a much wider measurement. It could be 14 and a quarter here. You've got to try to fit it in the 13 to 15, 16 opening. It's not going to work. So measure where you go and measure at the top. So you see, I've got these things set up here. Now, it follows the same type of fastening as end nailing all your uh, joists to your headers. You just end nail them. So I'm going to put in three screws. Another important thing to, to figure out is you want to try to make sure that this blocking doesn't go higher or lower than your joist lines. If they're not flush with the tops and bottoms of your joist, go to put on subfloor over this, you're going to have a bump. Or if it sticks out below, like let's say there's it's a it's open floor below and you have uh, ceiling, you know, drywall ceiling on top, you see a little bump in the drywall. So make sure as flush as it needs to be. Okay. So that piece is in. I'm going to move over to my next one. And now, since they're staggered like this, I'm able to fit my drill in here, or in your case, probably a nail gun, and shoot straight in. And it makes it a much easier installation. other side in and then kind of wrap this video up. Now this one here is sticking low so I want to pull this up. Oh boy. I will show you a neat little trick here. If you ever have two boards that are out of whack, and they're not in proper alignment, being flush, <laughs> nice little trick you can do. I need to run inside and grab my hammer real quick. Alright, 
So, got my hammer, and what I did is I drove a screw down into the lower board. Now I can take my hammer and hook that, hook on that screw, place the curve of my hammer head on the joist, and I can pull up like I'm trying to pull a nail out. What that's going to do is bring my joist up into the proper alignment so I can put my screw in. When you're all set with that trick, pull that screw out. Nobody even knows it was wrong to begin with. Okay, so this process would continue. Like I said, this piece would go on the right side, this piece would go on the left side, this piece would go on the right side. So you can see how it alternates on. Uh, all the way down. Now, it's important when you do it like this is don't start alternating on one side and then start, don't like try to meet in the middle because more often than not, you're going to run into a spot where both pieces are lined up. And again, it's not a problem, but it's not quite as ideal as having them alternate. So, my third question for you is. Question number three, what is the advantage of alternating the run of, of each piece of blocking? Why do we do that? What's the advantage of alternating your blocking? Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. And I'm gonna finish this blocking. Uh, and with our next video, we're gonna talk about laying out the sub four because we're almost done. So um, we get done. We got one more video after this, some other tips and tricks and installation techniques for putting on your sub four. So thank you for joining me. Write those questions, write the answers to those questions down and submit that stuff on Canvas and so I can get it graded and get it in the grade books. Please stay current with the work. That way it's easier uh, for you guys uh, come in the semester, you don't have so much work to try to make up. All right. Again, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.